And KVGC News Time, seven minutes after the hour of seven o'clock. Welcome to the news for a Tuesday, the 15th day of October for 2019. Well, following last week's power shutoffs, Governor Gavin Newsom on Monday demanded PG&E be held accountable, urging it to provide affected customers an automatic credit or rebate of $100 per residential customer and $250 per small business as some compensation for their hardships, saying that Californians should not pay the price for decades of PG&E's greed and neglect. The governor criticized the utility's management of the power shutoff as unacceptable and additionally calling for the company to make radical changes that prioritize customers' safety and modernization of its equipment. Also on Monday, the California Public Utility Commission said it's ordered PG&E to take immediate corrective action, citing significant problems with communication, coordination, and management during the latest public safety power shutoff event. Along with addressing the communication problems, the CPUC said it wants more accurate maps, power restored more quickly, and better coordination with counties and tribal governments. pg and CEO Bill Johnson responded by saying it had carried out the shutoffs in accordance with a plan that the California Public Utility Commission had approved under the commission's guidelines and pointed to the fact that no wildfires were started, adding that last week's PSPS was the right decision. And the idea of homeless housing will come back before the Calaveras Board of Supervisors following the review of two projects for the San Andreas area. The discussion before the Board of Supervisors was to allow the projects to continue or opt for alternate use of state housing monies. The board tabled the two controversial housing projects. The first proposal was a scattered site emergency shelter pilot program, which aims to build five mobile tiny house shelters on a portion of government center property in San Andreas. This project would also provide intensive case management for residents temporarily placed in the units. The other proposal being discussed was a planned housing project in San Andreas to build five housing units for individuals with secure, with severe rather, mental illness who were homeless or at risk of becoming homeless. The site for that was tentatively planned near the San Andreas Elementary School. Both of these projects are funded entirely by state grants or agencies. After much discussion, the board directed staff to bring the item back to uh, present a more in-depth analysis of alternative uses or locations for the grants funding the housing projects. And recently, the Sacramento-based Comstock magazine asked a panel of experts from across the capital region to share their thoughts on the issue of homelessness. One of those featured in the article was Amador Supervisor Frank Axe. Axe told the publication the driving factors of homelessness in Amador County include substance abuse, alcohol, methamphetamine, and opiates, mental illness, health issues, job loss, and low-paying jobs, lack of affordable housing, poor life decisions, and the death of a spouse, plus an older population in Amador. Axe went on to say the biggest obstacles to addressing homelessness in the county are changing public perception. According to Ask, by helping the homeless, it will not attract more homeless people to the area and that there's a misconception that the homeless are all drug addicts and responsible for their situation, so we shouldn't help them. Axe went on to say that Amador County is approaching the homeless issue by implementing a low-barrier shelter, a sanctioned camping area for homeless, whether it's tents or in cars. Portable toilets and wash stations will be supplied, thereby creating a more sanitary situation. Having a central location, Axe says, will facilitate the application of mental health services and provide a mechanism or pathway for the homeless to reenter society. The entire article is available online at ComstockMagazine.com. And the Mark Twain Wild West Fest will be taking over the downtown area of Historic Angels Camp this Saturday from 10 to 4 with free admission. But from 8 to 6, 
The event will force the closure of Highway 4, or I should say Highway 49, through downtown Angels Camp. Specifically, the closure points are Highway 49 at Main Street between Utica Park and Vallecito Road. Detours around the downtown area will be the Highway 4 bypass and Vallecito Road exit to Highway 4 Main Street and vice versa. Now sponsored by the Angels Camp Business Association, the event itself runs from 10 to 4 with free admission. And the third annual Breathe Deep Amador 5K Fun Run has been deemed a huge success. Again this year, held at the Italian Picnic Grounds and featuring a new twist, Crazy Hats and Hair, the event raised over $20,000. Breathe Deep Amador originated in honor of Len Jagoda, who lost his fight with lung cancer in 2011. This year, in memory of Len's love of crazy hats, the event was a crazy hat and hair event. Over 100 participants wore their craziest hat or hairdo to celebrate all those who are living with or have been lost to lung cancer and to support the Longevity Foundation. Since 2011, Amador County and Friends have raised over $105,000 for longevity. The foundation, the nation's largest leading lung cancer organization, investigates life-saving transitional research and provides support services and education for patients and caregivers. And again, a quick reminder for you, the city of Jackson now has Summit Street closed between Water and California Street, and it will be closed today until 5 o'clock for paving. And that's a look at local news on a gold country. Tuesday morning from the KVGC News Center, I'm Jim Geedy reporting. Remember, for the latest news, traffic, and weather 24 hours a day, always visit our website, kvgcradio.com.